Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Sunday morning, and uh, God has led me in his word to um, share something with my family on today. I know many of you are either getting ready to go to church or you have already gone and you're back home looking at this. And um, this will be the word that I'll be sharing with my family on today. It's, it's a fantastic word. Uh, the Bible says that every word of God is, is pure. It is a shield unto them that put their trust in it. So um, the word is the word is the word. It's the word of God. And I want to share with you what I'll be sharing with my family because I know that it is something that um, it will transform your life. And it'll help you to um, to focus your lives in a way that's going to bring glory to the Lord and it's going to benefit you. So, Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity to share your word. Father, I pray that you be glorified in all I say and do. Father, I pray that people will have ears to hear, that they will have hearts to receive, and minds to retain that which they learn, Father. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that um, you help me to relay this, this word in a way that uh, it would be fruitful to the hearers. And I ask this for all your help, your strength, and that you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse... One. It starts out saying, A good name is better than precious ointment. In the day that, I mean, and the day of death, than the day of one's birth. Now, this verse, um, the first part of it, a good name is better than oint, uh, precious ointment. My father used to always just drive it in our heads. That we need to have a good name, a good name, a good name. A good name is better than, than rubies. A good name is better than precious ointment. A good name is better than riches. He would drive that in our head. And that thing is always stuck with me. Some people don't care what the name is like. They don't care. Um, a good name is better than precious ointment. You know, I mean, that's just point blank. And then look at the second part. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. So the day of a person's death is better than the day of their birth. Why is that? You know, does that make any sense? Why is that? Well, first of all, before we hit that part, um, if you go in your Bible to the book of Acts, I want to show you something. Acts chapter 6. Acts 6, and um, verse 3, okay, okay, um, we'll start at verse 1, and in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the neglected, I'm sorry, in the daily ministration, right? The things that, you know, that was supposed to be done unto the widows, they were being neglected. Verse 2, and the 12 called the multitude of the disciples, a lot of disciples. They called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God, watch this, and serve God tables okay and 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 give that which was um necessary unto the widows you know their their, their daily ministration you know food mm, distribute food distribute if they needed clothing if they needed attention whatever whatever you know he said look we we got to be in the word because we got to teach everybody so we don't need to leave the word to do this, this is important. We don't need to leave the word to do this. Okay? 
Let me hear what it's saying. Um, we don't need to, you know, leave the word to go serve tables. Wherefore, verse 3, brethren, look ye out among you seven men. Watch this. Of honest report. Full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Whom we may appoint over this business. So in other words, okay, so you men look among yourselves and bring seven of yourselves. Bring seven, okay, that are of what? That are of honest report. That's full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. And we'll appoint them. Now, look at how important it is to have the right people in the right position. You're talking about ministering to widows. Making sure they eat. Making sure they have whatever substance they need to have on a daily basis. And the men that's going to be set up over this had to have an honest report about them. They had to have a good name. And they had to be full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom to serve tables. How often you see today, we just put any and everybody in position because they might be what we consider upstanding in the community because they may have a, a, a sphere of influence and power in the community or whatever because they may have money uh, and status and because they know other people, you know, they, they, they have a, 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 a sphere of networking. And, and, and we always look at this stuff and we be appointing people to stuff because we're going to benefit from it. Some kind of way, and most of the time it's financially. So, and we'll let people who got money and stuff like that, they come in and they want to be in position because they want to be seen, because they want to feel powerful and all like that, and because they offer us mammon or money, we'll put them in position before we'll put those that have an honest report, those that are full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. So the whole thing goes down. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out. That was very important about having a good name. Now let's go back to Ecclesiastes 7 and 1. Okay. So a good name is better than precious ointment. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. Okay. The day of death versus the day of a person's birth. It's, it's just talking about the weariness of life. We go through this life and life wears on you. There's a weariness of life. Mm -hmm. You'll see this if you go through, um, you can go back over these, write them down. Look at Genesis chapter 27 and 46. Okay. Look at Job chapter 3 verse 20. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 17. You can look at Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. And you can also see an example of this in Jonah chapter 4 and verse 8. There's a weariness of life. So that's why here it is being said that the day of a person's death is better than the day of his birth. Because when you're born into this life, this life is going to wear on you. And now you have been given the task of, 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 of either walking in uprightness before God, finding out what his purpose for you is, and living out his purpose, not yours, his purpose, or, you know, you, you got that to deal with, or you just die and there's no more. So that's what he means by that. Okay, so then you get to verse 2. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. Wow. For that is the end of all men. And the living will lay it to his heart. Okay, death 
is universal, okay? We all going to walk that path. You know, uh, it is appointed unto all men once to die. And after that, what? It's the judgment. So look at this. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting. Why is that? Because when you go to the house of mourning, the house of mourning causes you to begin to reflect and do what I call a self-inventory of yourself. See, when you go to the house of mourning, people mourning the death of somebody, you know, um, it, it, it's a time of reflection. And it lets us know that even as this one has gone on, we're going to go on. So we better figure this thing out. We better figure this thing out because it's coming. And the thing about death, we don't know when it's coming. There's people that have been what we consider on their deathbed and God has raised them up. And there's people that has been what we consider healthy as an ox and they fall dead. It's so unexpected, but it's coming. It comes like a thief in the night. It, it, it creeps in unaware and it gets us in a moment, in an instant with God. And it's going to happen to us. It's going to sneak up on us. It's going to come when we don't expect it. It's just going to come and get us. That's how death is. It's coming. It's coming. I want you to understand that it's coming. It's coming to you and it's coming to me. So we got to get ourselves together. We got to get this thing together. Verse three. Um, sorrow is better than laughter. Wow. Sorrow is better than laughter. How? How is that? For the sadness of the countenance, or for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. People say, I got a good heart. I, I, God know my heart. Sure, he knows your heart. That's why he said that the, our heart is, 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 is um, how he said, um, the heart of man is deceitful above all things, and it is desperately wicked. Who shall know it? Who can know it? Well, he knows it. Oh, I got a good heart. I got, do you? God's words say it, it's, it's, it's deceitful above all things and it's desperately wicked. See, we need to exchange our heart for the heart of Christ. We got to allow this word to change our heart. But look at this. Sorrow is better than laughter for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. Okay? This ought to make you think. And see, when you think about this, sorrow is better than laughter. Sorrow causes you to think. Sorrow also does something. Sorrow causes many to repent. Because when you begin to think and your heart is sorrowful, you begin to realize there's still some stuff inside of me that need to change. Most of the time, sorrow makes people repent, or it should make you repent, but it does make you think. So sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. When, the more you reflect and the more you look within and, and, and stop just walking around like some babbling idiot just laughing all the time sure laughter works like a medicine but you just walking around and yeah and you never really really seriously look within yourself i know when i really really look at the real me it causes me to be sad because i i realize i wasted so much time and i'm still wasting time I got to be about my father's business. I got to stop having all this folly, all of this vanity in my life. I got to get busy. People are falling by the wayside. People are being neglected. People are dying in their sins. Stop all these, these you know, so many preachers opening up these books every Sunday. Giving all these old goofy, stupid little sermons. Talking about, uh, preach, boy, preach. 
trying to bring glory to themselves. You got a vain heart. Preach, boy, preach. I'm trying. You vain. You vain. This ain't never been about you. And it ain't going to never be about you. But you make it about you when you do that. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all nah, Y'all don't hear me. I'm preaching better than y'all. Amen. And who do you think you are? This ain't about you. You know what? I learned sometimes people don't be amening and all that because they're learning something. And it's like, you know, it's bringing them to a place uh, of, uh, man, I got to make a decision. Man, you know, sometimes people are learning and you sitting there want somebody to affirm your word and let God do the affirming. Just plant or just water and let God bring the increase. But you need your praise right now. Shout amen. Shout amen. You ought to say amen. Y'all y'all, crazy. But it's going to be judged. All of this stuff we do and say is going to be judged. You want the, pra the praise of man. You want your glory. When it's supposed to be bringing honor and glory to the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's keep going. Verse 4, the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. But the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. This is a good one here, y'all. Verse 4. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. Again, the house of mourning, that place where you're going before God and you're trying to get right. You're going before God and you and and and, and you, you 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 you're trying to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're trying to make sure you're in the place where you should be. You're trying to make sure you 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 you're correct in your living and your speaking in in the things you do. The house of mourning, not you just walking around, but the house of mourning is a place uh, of inventory. It's a place where you check in yourself. Okay? The house of mourning. And look what it say. The heart of the wise is in that house. But look at this. But the heart of fools is in the house of myrrh. I looked up that word, um, house of uh, myrrh, which means joy gladness and pleasure okay your heart is always in pleasure and, and when it's talking about this joy gladness and pleasure it's talking about folly that's what it's talking about you just frivolously just live your life just case sarah sarah whatever will be will be you know just you know okay whatever whatever there's no there's no there's no purpose and when I say purpose, I'm talking about God's purpose. God's purpose is not found in your life. So you live your life um, in the house, uh, in the house of fools. Okay. Verse five. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise. Wow. Than for a man to hear the song of fools. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise. You know, people come and they bring you the word of God and you will sit there being an idiot talking about you can't judge me. This judges everybody. This judges everybody. And one day, just like I got this book open, the books are going to be open and we will give an account of what we did while we were alive in these bodies. Okay. So again, it's better to hear the rebuke of the wise than to hear the song of fools. What is the song of fools? I sat here and I said, Father, what is that? <laughs> and he just clearly told me. First of all, the rebuke of the wise is correction, okay? And the song of fools is the praise of men.
You and, oh, you such a good person. Oh, you so this and that. Oh, this and that. Oh, just everything about it. Oh, this is it. That's the song of fools. That's the song of fools. The praise of man is the song of fools. Mm -hmm. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than to hear the song of fools. Child, you all right. You doing good. You, you ain't got to do all that. It don't take all that. That's the song of fools. That's the song of fools. So as we look at this, and that's verse 5 right there. Let's move to verse 6. Now this one is good. For as the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of the fool. This also is vanity. Look at this. For as the crackling of thorns under a pot. What, what, what does that mean? Okay, watch this. The crackling of thorns under a pot is the, is the sound that thorns give under a pot. But it refers to wood being burned. It's making a sound. It's obvious that it's there. But as the sound, for as the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of a fool. The, the thorns sitting under a pot, it's obvious it's there and it's burning. You know what? You hear it now, but soon it's gone. Okay? <laughs> you got the thorns under there and it's under the pot and it's burning. It's making a sound, but pretty soon it's gone. It won't make no sound. It's not there. And it say, just like the crackling of thorns under the pot, so is the laughter of a fool. This also is what? Vanity. Now, from that point, I'm going to shift gears a little bit, and I'm going to go to another part that came to me as I was looking at this. And it just basically talks about, just like we're, we're, we're showing here how... Um, Death is better than, the, the, the day of death is better than the day, the day of someone's birth. We got to get busy and do what we're supposed to do now. Okay. Go to um, St. John. Uh, St. John, is it chapter 9? Yeah. St. John chapter 9 and um, verse 4. It's in red. Jesus said this. I must work the works of him that sent me when, while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. Um, Jesus saying, I must work, work meaning I got to perform, I got to produce, I got to do the work of him that sent me while it is what? Day. That word day refers to not in the daytime. Because you got to work day and night. No, it refers to life. I got to perform. I got to produce. I got to do the work of God while I have life. He say the night comes, meaning death. When death comes, no man can work. So I got to do it now. I got to do God's work now while I have life. The night comes, death comes, no man can work. Okay? Let's move forward. Uh, we're going to back up again and we're going to go back to Ecclesiastes. Show you a couple more verses and we'll be done. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Um, verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand find to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. So in other words, we got to do our due diligence while there's life in our body. Everything that has to be done got to be done now. And the thing is, death is so uncertain. You got to get busy right now. 
you know, when you when you turn this video off, you need to start praying right then and asking God, first of all, to forgive your slothfulness, to forgive your inability to be focused and ask God to strengthen you, strengthen you with his might, his power. Ask God to give you his grace, his grace, meaning his ability, his power, his strength. Ask God to grace you with everything you need to perform the work that he called you to do. OK, so look at that. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. Whatsoever thy hand find it to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work nor device uh, uh, that that word device meaning there's no account there's no reasoning there's no reckoning that's what that word mean there when you look it up for there is for there is no work nor device nor knowledge nor wisdom in the grave whether thou goest now one more verse go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12 last verse Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and the last um, well, the last two verses of that chapter, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. It could have stopped right there. Fear God. And I want you to look up that word fear. Look up that word fear. Because you guys always want to say, well, fear is reverence. Fear is reverence. But if you look up the word fear all throughout the Bible... Fear also takes on that other uh, fear that 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 means terror. That means um, you know you ought to be scared. You ought to be afraid. It's not just oh well I reverence that you ought to. That word fear brings on terror also. And if I make no mistake, I did a, a word study on this, and it was like three different definitions of the word fear throughout the scripture. And I would advise you to look it up in this verse. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Verse 14, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, that 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 is a sobering statement right there. I mean, that ought to that if you don't leave this video and begin to repent. And turn away from your slothfulness. Turn away from your um, um, inability, from, from your inability to work the works of Him that sent you. Then ain't no hope. <laughs> I mean, I know it does it for me. It causes me to, to refocus my thinking, refocus my heart, and to get busy doing the will of God to open this book daily and read it and find out what it is I'm supposed to be doing not all this foolishness all this God wants you rich and you know live your best life and 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 and, and uh, 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 get all you can in this life and enjoy yourself Get busy. Get busy being holy. Get busy walking in righteousness. Get busy um, 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 sanctifying yourself, separating yourself, and being unspotted by this world. Get busy being about God. And stop going to these churches and looking at everybody else and saying, well, I, I ain't that bad. I, I'm, I'm, I look like this one and I look like this one and I act like this one and I did. And then you just go out there and you just want to huck a bucket, blah, 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 and let somebody put their hands on you and push you all back and push you on the ground. And you know they pushing you back. You know it. And you feel like, well, I went on the ground when they pushed me down. Somebody caught me behind. I, you know what? Don't, don't, don't let nobody stand behind you. And you won't never fall back. And you know you won't. You fall back because you know somebody that'll catch you. Don't let nobody stand back. Then you will never fall back. 
because you won't let nobody push you down. But you feel like because you hit the ground, somebody laid you down. And, and you don't, you know, what's the time limit on laying down there? What's being accomplished while you laying down there? Man, I've let people push me down so many times, man, and I'm laying down there and I'm trying to receive whatever it is I'm supposed to be receiving. And my mind be on some everything and I'm laying down there like, you know, OK, do I get up now? Do I, you know, what, what, what do I do? How do I act when I get up? What am I supposed to do? Okay, people looking at me, how do I let them know I received what I was supposed to receive while I was laying down there? Y'all know that's what be going through y'all mind too. That's why the Father got me saying it. Let's stop playing games. Let's stop being fake, okay? Let's get busy finding out what God's business is and let's do God's business. And let's stop being fake. Let's get saved for real. And let's walk in holiness for real. Stop playing games. And stop letting these people toy with your lives. And try to show that they got some kind of power by manipulating and using you. Get in the word for yourself. Study to show yourself approved. Study to show that you have met God's approval. Okay? Being a workman that needed not to be ashamed as they rightly divide the word of truth. God bless y'all. Y'all have a great day, all right?